Welcome to In The Zone. In this series, we're gonna walk you through actual elk hunting call-ins and scenarios and explain the situation. We're gonna talk about how we located the elk, how we set up on the elk, and the strategies we used, the tactics we used, to hopefully and eventually call the elk in. In this episode, we're gonna revisit Destination Elk and the series we did this past fall on YouTube. This particular episode, we're in Wyoming. It's the last day of our hunt and Dirk, Donnie, and I are down to the final afternoon of the final day. We've located some bugling bulls that morning up on a north facing slope, and we've moved into position in a saddle above the bulls to be able to intercept them or be able to cut them off as they get up and start moving out to feed in the evening. We're sitting there in the saddle, and as we're waiting for the bulls to start bugling, a bull in the opposite direction across the hillside from us breaks loose and bugles. So of course we scramble, we grab our packs, we put our boots on, and we take off to set up on this bull. A couple things to note, it's midday, it's probably two or three in the afternoon. The bull's bugle was just a weak bugle. He was in his bed and we heard that. We moved in a little closer to be able to pinpoint exactly where he was. Once we had him pinpointed, then we had a decision to make. Once we moved up 120 or 150 yards, we were able to bugle and locate the bull uh, and find out exactly where he was. And we determined he was bedded on the ridge just above us. What we didn't realize though was just how steep and brushy that hillside was. And we couldn't see the, the cliffs in front of us. We couldn't see the big wall of brush. And so our initial setup had us setting up right there, hoping the bull would come right down the draw, right into our setup. Yeah. He's in the draw or up on the side there, up on the hill. When the bull first started bugling, his intensity wasn't very high. He was probably bedded down, giving us some lazy bugles. But as we moved in closer and gave him a couple more bugles, he really upped the intensity. And those last three or four bugles there, you could really hear it in his voice that he was more motivated to come in and probably more aggressive than he had been the previous 10 or 15 minutes. So our first attempt was just a basic two-person collar shooter setup in a direct line with where the bull was. Dirk moved ahead, I moved back probably 50 or 60 yards from him. I was behind the point of the ridge so the bull had to come all the way down basically to me before he'd be able to get visual on me and at that point he would have already passed through Dirk's shooting lane. The thermals are moving uphill so we're just hoping that bull will come right down the chute, right into where he thinks I am and right into Dirk's lap. In this case, as in just about any case when I'm set up calling elk, I'm gonna be cutting them off, I'm gonna be aggressive on the bugles, and I'm also gonna be employing raking. And I just find a big stick and I use it to rake a tree, a branch, something that's gonna display dominance. All I'm trying to do is replicate a bull elk using his antlers to rake a tree, which is the way that they display their dominance. And the raking coupled with aggressive bugling 
often is enough to break those bowls loose and get them to come into our setup. After several minutes of calling from the same position, the bull's bugles had definitely intensified and it sounded like he had definitely moved in our direction at least briefly. But it now sounded like he was moving back up the hillside and away from us. I tried several tactics, including raking, blunking, and panting, trying anything to convince the bull to come down the ridge to us. At this point, we're basically just set up, we're static, we haven't moved around a lot, we're in the same initial setup, and we're just hoping to pull that bull down to us. We can tell that he's moving, his bugles are getting a little louder, his aggression hasn't escalated a whole lot since when he initially escalated it, but we still feel that he's moving towards us, we're holding his interest, he's bugling frequently, we're able to cut him off and challenge him frequently, so we're continuing with the same strategy at this point. Based on the bull's bugles at this point, we could tell he was starting to move up the hillside a little bit. And knowing where Dirk was set up, we moved back around the hill, hoping to pull him down and get a little better angle that might convince him to come in on a straight line rather than circling above us. Again, not knowing the terrain like we do now, not realizing there was a huge cliff there, we were still hoping to be able to draw that bull straight down to us. But what he was actually doing was moving up above that cliff because he had no way of keeping the wind in his favor and feeling protected as he came in unless he went straight up the mountain. After a few minutes of silence, the bull again began bugling directly up the hillside above us. 
and with the steep and thick terrain, we knew he wouldn't come straight down to us, so we needed to move once again to get into a better position. was on the move again, this time heading toward the saddle where we had first called to him from. The saddle would provide a perfect vantage point, both visually and with good thermals. We knew we had to move fast and tried to get ahead of the bull and intercept him as he moved across the hillside. With the bull moving quickly and bugling aggressively across the hillside above us, we're playing a very dynamic game of cat and mouse, trying to keep the wind in our favor while trying to get as close as we possibly could to the path that we knew the bull was heading in on. The bull ended up beating us to the opening, barely. With him now moving ahead of us, I was forced to swing back to the right to keep the wind in our favor and make one last attempt to call the bull back across the opening to Dirk.
could do. We were so close. We just didn't close that gap quite enough and the bull made it back up on the hillside before we were able to get a shot. Looking back at that hunt, there are a couple things I think that we could have done or should have done differently. Uh, first, had we known the terrain, I think it would have completely changed how we set up and approached the bull. Knowing what we know now, I probably would have went across the draw to our right, climbed up the opposite hillside and got up on the ridge at the same level as the bull and then moved in. We'd had the wind in our favor. It would have been easy terrain for the bull to just really come right across to us and come into that setup. However, we'd never been there before. We didn't know the terrain. We didn't realize there was a big cliff and all the brush right there between us and the bull. And he relocated. He went over the top and basically found a new path because he wanted to come in. The second thing that we probably should have done different was we should have closed that gap faster. Knowing the bull had got up on the top of the hillside gained elevation, we probably should have boogied up there knowing where he was going to come out at the elevation he was at. We kind of laid back hoping he would drop down and come into our setup, but once he hit that elevation he didn't want to drop down. So had we moved in another just 30 or 40 yards, Dirk would have been in position and probably had a 40 yard easy shot there across that flat. And then lastly, when that bull came through the opening and continued up to the saddle, it's pretty common for them to return on the same path they came in on if they don't get winded or busted out of there when they turn to leave they'll probably walk back that same path so had we moved ahead at that point after the bull came across the opening and got closer to the trail he'd come in on when he returned on the exact same trail we would have been set up again for another close shot so a couple things to to keep in mind as you're calling elk especially in these dynamic elk calling situations where you're playing that game of cat and mouse where you're really moving around and readjusting continually. Keep in mind where the elk might be going. Keep in mind that he might return on that same path and try to intercept him as he comes through there. Calling elk is often a game of cat and mouse, but being aggressive and ready to adjust on the fly is always going to be a vital component to consistent elk calling success.